Well, good day, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Railroad Wrap. Uh, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, be sure and subscribe down below and click the little bell icon so you can catch future videos. Uh, well, here we are, month three, episode three of Railroad Wrap, and uh, Tony and Lionel and I are excited to uh, come and share with you a little bit about what is happening in model railroading today. So uh, we're going to just... I can't, be on, I can't be on the show. You can't be on the show? No, I'm because the Toronto, my beloved Leafs lost in the first round of the playoffs again, so I can't be on the show. So you're in, you're in mourning? Is no, it's after late afternoon here, but okay, you're you're suffering from grief. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're pretty much used to it. I just can't. Do it. <laughs> I was going to say, I, Tony and I, I think, can relate a little bit because I, I think Tony, I know myself, have been a lifelong Kansas City Royals fan, and so we're losing is just a part of the culture. Um, not, as not as bad as the Cubs. Not as bad as the Cubs. Yeah, there are the Royals true. every once in a while will surprise you, but yeah. And I, I grew up over in St. Louis, the Cardinals. I got a, you know, grade A team there. But yeah, well, I, Mike, we, we don't talk Mike about buddy. the Cardinals. Mike Buddy. Mike Buddy of uh, of uh, Ken Patterson's What's Neat This Week. He's a huge fan of the Cardinals. I saw a picture he had posted on Facebook of him and a wife at the Cardinals game. Did I say a wife? Him and his wife at the Cardinals <laughs> game this week, as a matter of fact. And uh, see, it looked like they were having a great time. So I believe that I believe that's his current wife. The current one. That, oh, yeah. there you go. There you go. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the way. That's, that's my. Well, hey, let's jump into some, some model railroad stuff and because I think we got some exciting things to talk about uh, today. And one of the things that I want to talk about, I'm going to start off with here because we are always talking about youth in the hobby and, and the hobby being, you know, bigger than, than I think almost anybody realizes and, and not dying, despite the fact that we hear so much about its demise from, from certain folks. Uh, this month, our NMRA division had our annual make and take clinic and uh, doing some craftsman kits and we get started at the meeting. And then later in the year, we have a, a modeling challenge where, where people can bring back those kits or, or other models and kind of have a little in-house competition with the division. And, and I bring that up because uh, I was really excited that we've got two uh, teens or preteens uh, who are getting really involved in, in our division and who were involved in the modeling challenge uh, this month. And in fact, uh, the youngest of them, I, I'm not going to mention their names because they're, they're minors, but but I uh, got some photos of them here. <laughs> but uh, but how do you know? Um, how do you know what they do for a living? I was going to say, yeah, are there a lot of mines? Down <laughs> yeah, well, you know, mining you is know? a big thing in Kansas City, apparently. So. Oh. But anyway, the, the youngest one is 11, and uh, he's already earned a merit award for a scratch-built structure this year. And then the other young man is uh, is now 13, but last year he, he was 12 years old and entered a model in our modeling challenge. And just a really, really cool locomotive that he had super detailed and, and weathered. It just looked fantastic. And and uh, I'm just I'm really pleased that these guys, the, the coming with one with their dad and the other with his grandpa and, and getting involved in the hobby and and uh, it's just it's just pretty cool, pretty exciting stuff. What was the what was the make and take? What, was it like one thing that everybody built, or how what'd you do? We we do it a little different uh, different years. This year we gave uh, a pretty wide variety of kits that people could choose from. So there were several different things that people were working on, and uh, the amount of variety that was available depended a little bit on what scale you were working in. There was just a couple of in scale kits, naturally. Uh, but we had a couple of S scale guys. We had some O scale guys as well as uh, a bunch of a bunch of uh, HO scalers. Uh, but wood craftsman kits, so they all had that in common from a couple of different companies. One from uh, uh, Wild West Models out in Colorado. Mm -hmm. uh, some from from uh, Fo scale models back east. And I think uh, there's a was it North Carolina something or other is another another. Company Sipping that, and switching society. Oh, it's a oh, no. It's a, yeah, it's a company. it's a company that makes. There's a million. There is a million yeah. companies that. Oh, companies there is. That. Yeah. Well, I just I just learned in the last month or so uh, by watching the What's Neat show, and Mike Buddy has been working on this Craftsman kit that comes from a, a modeler, and he mentioned it being in Missouri. I found it. It's just like a few minutes from me, and and I didn't have huh. any idea they even existed down in. Uh, uh, 
uh, uh, well, I'll think of the name of the town later, but about but about 30 minutes south of me right here. Didn't even know they were there. So, you know. That's like the second time we've mentioned Mike Buddy and uh, Ken Patterson's What Neat Show. Well, they, we're going to have to put a little thing on the bottom there. We have to say hey, the I new voice. A... I have a yeah exactly it's the, <laughs> it's the he is simply he's the mod he's simply known as the dude the in the dude. hobby. I have a thing I just thought of. Uh -huh. I just thought of something. Um, can we stop figure out? Can we figure out a way to stop referring to that age old discussion about the age of the hobby and it's old and it's dying? Because I don't I think that is long gone. You know what? I just thought oh, of a yeah. I just thought of a slogan. I just literally thought of a slogan. I, I can't wait. I can't wait. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Wait, I'm wait. Right, let me get a pen. I, I got my yeah, pencil. Get a pen. I'm get ready. a pen. Yeah, write this down. Uh-huh. Model railroading. It's younger than you think. <laughs> oh, that's not bad. That's not <laughs> bad. Younger than you think. I like it. Yeah, yeah we like got to, like, it's like, it's such an age-old discussion about the age of, it, that, that is like, that is that is not happening because the hobby's growing like crazy, and we are constantly talking about people that are young, you know, in, in, in their teens and guys in their. There's a ton of guys in their twenties and thirties, and mm -hmm. the hobby isn't even close. That 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 this we should we should be official this show because we are both know, we all know that this show is going to become huge over the years. We should officially kick off the. Model railroading, it's younger than you think campaign. I, I like it. I love I it. And you heard it first here on Railroad Rap, straight from the lips of Lionel Strang. So, yeah, sorry good. about that. Sorry about the leaves. Yeah. yeah. Hey, since you're talking about uh, diversity in the hobby, um, uh, I believe, Lionel, you've had some, some work done by Kaylee Zhang lately. Uh, I did. On some locomotives. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Because it's pretty cool stuff. It is very cool stuff. Uh, Bruce, uh, my uh, Bruce Wilson, the moderately agitated male boy of uh, my podcast, the podcast, AML, A Modeler's Life. We were uh, working on, we were trying to get my locomotives going with uh, one of Martin Jenkins' little pie sprog things, another whole discussion. And we discovered that the decoders in it were so old. How old were they? They could go in a museum. Yeah. Right, like from Wangro. Remember that name, Tony? Wangro? Wangro. No. That's, that's a predecessor. Wow. That's the predecessor of NCE. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah. So that's from like the late 90s when, when DCC first came out. So anyways, Kaylee heard of my plight and she volunteered to take these two locomotives and upgrade them with detail parts, put in new decoders, and just uh, give them a whole fresh look. So she sent me one back, and I took a couple of photos, which you've seen here, and uh, she just had a grand old time. And for those of you that don't know, Kaylee is uh, just stands just slightly over five foot eight, and her favorite snack is uh, the original Sun Chips. The original Sun Chips. Oh. Yeah. Good choice. And anyway, she added a whole bunch of details west, a new decoder, a whole bunch of stuff, and it does very, very cool. This, very, very this cool. Is a, this is a this is a Jeep Nine, Jeep Seven. What's yeah? One of the it's one of those Atlas. Uh, That's the next question. Kato, it's a Atlas Cato Jeeps from way, way back. Way that, back. that locomotive, it's actually like 25, 30 years old. So this wasn't like a like a decoder ready kind of a locomotive where you could just drop in something in. She's she's doing some some serious work to to get a modern decoder installed here as well as the detail parts. This is from the old days when yeah. the handrails were molded on and everything like that and I had started on it and got it to a point and she just jumped in there with both feet and said I'm going to make this way better and she did and it's very very cool. So so tell us this Lionel what's your plan what are you going to do with this thing now that or, well there's more than one but the one that we're looking at here in particular what are you going to uh, do with these? You know what I'd really like to build you know what I'd really like to do is build a very cool shelf layout mm -hmm. like a you know maybe six feet down one wall and ten feet down another wall and because I think nowadays you uh, you can have a small layout and get so much impact out of that layout with everything that you locomotives and cars and I mean I'm excited I don't know Tony if you were going to talk about it but I'm excited about that tangent PS1 box yeah. car and all the stuff now that you can get it's just so that's what I'd like to do I'd like to build a new little shelf layout but I don't know the smaller the smaller layout's kind of the direction of the hobby right now I mean we got 
You got Joe Fugate with the with the Toma, the you know, the one model of one, uh, one module approach, and and so many others that are that are kind of purporting the you know the switching layout and just you know lots of detail and you know cool operations in a, in a small uh, small space. Uh, there's there's neat stuff you could do with the, with that. As a side note, uh, I'm going to be interviewing in this uh, next few days. I'm going to be interviewing a fellow named Tom Klamoski. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's got this really cool layout, North uh, Georgia, Northeastern, and he uh, just uh, wrote a book for another company, and it's going to be released in September about building layouts in small spaces. So it's uh, cool, very very cool, very very neat. So there is so much going on. There is so much going on, Tony. I don't know how do you how do you keep up with all the stuff that's going on in this hobby. You know, I'm working on, I'm finishing up the August edition. Now it goes to press in late June and I get it down to the hundred pages. And then as more stuff keeps coming in, it gets back out again. <laughs> At one point it was 160 pages. I got it down to a hundred. It was back to 120 pages. It's back to a hundred again. And some of the stuff moves over into the future and some of it goes into online. But yeah, I just today had said that to Shane that, Hey, I got it back down to a hundred pages again. And then suddenly I'm adding in some scale trains and some other announcements. And it's like, Oh yeah, I could, we could, we're a hundred pages and I think we could do 200 pages a month and still not keep up with everything. I had a guy email me this week saying, I wish there could be a magazine just on the 3d printed releases. Cause there's so many guys doing, yeah, but- you know, th- little 3d things or they make stuff available on shapeways he said i would buy a magazine of nothing but keeping track of all of those details all those shells parts and it's like i agree that would be a great idea but i can see like, that because man that, that 3d printing stuff yeah. is, i mean it is literally changing the face of the hobby it's just making so much it stuff is. available <laughs> that's never been available for and and you know a large manufacturer probably not not reasonable for them to make them, but you know a smaller manufacturer with a three D printer that can market that stuff can can uh, I mean they can pump stuff out that guys have never seen before anywhere, and that's it's exciting. It's it's, it's I think it's the new Craftsman Frontier. Forget the hacksaws, and I'm going to take <laughs> part of this gel and you know this under frame. Now the guy just starts from scratch. I'm wow, that is re- that is it. Sorry, I that was rude of me. I cut you off there, Tony. I apologize. Oh, no offense taken. Okay. Um, but feel free to remind me of that in the months coming, upcoming months. Oh, um, I... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you just said a mouthful there. The up, it's the new craftsman corner of model railroading. That's a great analogy because that's what it is. Because to make stuff in 3D, you have to do the drawings and everything. And it is, it's like craftsman mm-hmm. modeling. And then you, and then the thing, it, it doesn't just happen magically. There is actually a fair amount of work in producing right. a 3D thing. We should we should have Mike Peterson on here from what is his company called? The Iowa Scaled Engineering, but he has also has uh, grain bins and things like that. I forget what. Right, it, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure what. But, the no, name I'm, is. I'm, I'm, convinced, I'm convinced as you go and pull out like 50s and 40s hobby magazines, and you see the big drill press. And the guy's got all this, you know, it looks like he could go work on a Buick. Right. And now it's like, no, I mean, years from now, guys will look at magazines and go, what are all those little boxes everybody has on their desk? Like, well, those were 3D printers. And, you know, this is how they made those parts. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, 50 years from now, just as you, I look at some of those magazines and the guy's got his welder goggles on and he's got some poor, you know, die cast Varney steam locomotive that he's got on a drill press, like, you know, it's Frankenstein's lab. It's like, <laughs> now this is the hobby is 3D printing and you build what you need. And yeah, so it's, again, the if anybody thinks, oh, everything's ready to roll and craftsman and skill stuff doesn't mean anything anymore, then you've never seen something 3D printed. So, yeah. We, we, have, we have a couple of things coming. We've got in our August issue that yellow Relco, where they took an SD40-2 and this Relco company turned it into a maintenance away. Weird looking big yellow chunk of a locomotive that UP has. Uh, Shane has one of those from Baldy Knox. I think I'm saying it right. Baldy Knox Designs. Hmm. And he sells these kits. And we got one of his resin shells for that. And Shane painted and decaled it. So again, there's 
that's that to me is what has become the well i'm gonna saw three shells up to make this locomotive wow um baldy knox i think that's the guy's that's name a new one, brett right? brett isaacs and baldy knox designs google it and he's got i think his his sh uh shop is on etsy etsy dot com and he's got all kinds and he supplies the decals for it too and yeah, we're going to have a review in August of showing this being built. And it's, again, it's such cool stuff. And it's things you just never imagine, you know, yeah. like that it would be that. And that was the gist of Shane's review of this is such a cool piece of equipment, but outside of brass or a big, you know, put together project, how can you have this that easy? And literally it was a one piece shell that he painted, put windows in, decaled, and it was done and put it on a Cato in scale SD40-2 drive. So yeah, it actually was easy. And speaking of young people, Shane is Shane Mason, who has uh, started working with you at Model Railroad News like when he was 20. Yes, yeah. Five, you, five years ago, yeah. Has it been that long, five years? Four or five years, because he posted that earlier this year, and I didn't realize it had been that long. So, yeah. 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 Well, hey, how, long is, uh, how long has Ron, uh, Ron Marsh been with us? Well, Working with, here on Railroad, yeah. Well, he's the founder of the Railroad Wrap, so I oh. think he's been here since episode oh. one, all the way back to episode one, season one. All the way back. <laughs> all the way back. Well, hey, Tony, I, we were talking before before the show a little bit about uh, the plethora of, of switchers that are coming out on the market right now, and so before we run out of time, why don't you talk to us a little bit about a little bit about some of those? Yeah, yeah the you know the typical EMD in cab switcher. And there are no less than at least three that have hit the market that are and are all new tooling. There's two from Walther's mainline. These are HO scale. There's an NW2 phase five, which is a later phase of that. Mm -hmm. And an SW7 is coming out in June. And then Rapido Trains has got an SW1200 that is just fantastic. They had done the SW1200 RS, the Canadian version, a few years ago. This is their first doing U.S. railroad prototypes. I took a couple of these down to Midwest Model Railroad, which is, you know, you can buy a Modeler's Life merchandise there, Lionel. Did you know that? Yeah, if you go to their website, MidwestModelRR.com, boom, right there across yeah. the navigation bar, AML. AML and they've got, and, you know, and they're, they keep expanding the store. I've asked, when are they going to have Lionel Strang mannequins <laughs> in the store dressed in the AML? So I can, like, I'm getting my trains and my books and magazines and kits, and then, like, Where's your Where's the men's fashion department? Oh, that's yeah. in the back. That's and then what we need. Yeah, that's what they there. need is a men's fashion department. Like there that. you go. But anyway, where was I? Oh, but right. I took those switchers down in Darius that works there. He and I sat and looked at the Rapido one. So there'll be a video out on Midwest Model Railroad uh, in their e-blast soon on those because they have those in stock. They come with DCC and sound, road accurate all the way around. I've got like a Rio Grande, a Great Northern, and New Haven that came in as samples. The Rio Grande is on its way up to little Mike Wachowski is doing his first review for Model Railroad News of that one. And then the Great Northern is heading to Texas for Chris Atkins and the New Haven I have not, I, I may end up doing something on it. I, but in all of them from Flexicoil trucks to the Type A switcher trucks to whether they have a drop step with the chain on the handrail or not and the details just incredible. The correct horns. The New Haven even has those little, uh, oh, like, you know, bugle looking things, or instead of the bugle type horn, those like speaker looking horns that New Haven had. They just gone crazy on the detail. Uh, interior inside of it with a little red fire extinguisher you can see in the back corner of the cab. And they run fantastic. That I've, I've run both that Great Northern and Rio Grande, tested those out before I sent them. And, and one of the neatest things, they come with stickers in the box. One that's a round sticker that says "Nerd Certified." <laughs> I love it. And that's from that's from Rapido. And I got um, it. I, I, know where you, I know where you can send that New Haven locomotive. Chris Adams, who's all who? Yeah, is he? Yeah, his entire yeah. layout is uh, New Haven. It's the uh, Valley Local New Haven something or other. If you go, he has a Facebook page. He's one of these guys with a gigantic name. But anyways, Chris Adams, who is uh, very famous on the AML, yeah. Mr. Fitness, as we like to refer to him as, he's always out riding his bike or something. Uh, he's a he's a dyed in the wool New Haven guy. He'd be perfect for that. Well, he would be. I'd need to get in touch with him because I've never had him do anything. 
for the magazine. But yeah, these there's three new switchers. The main lines are budget priced, but they do come with ECC sound as an option. Uh, the Rapido is absolutely top of the line and is just fantastic. Uh, and again, it is standard DC and DCC sound. I, I think I think Lionel has a question. Yes, Lionel. What is the deal? Like, as as the editor of Model Railroad News and your finger on the pulse of everything in the hobby, what is the is the hobby getting? Like, is there a is there a possibility of just like so much? Like, is it getting flooded with this kind of stuff, or is it just the, the there's a market for all of this stuff? There seems to. I mean, it just it disappears immediately. It seems yeah. like a lot I, of a lot of what's been coming out lately. Uh, they almost are, are underrunning it because it's sold out as fast as it gets to the hobby shops. I and, think, yeah, we've had you know, some production delays and things with the COVID situation last year. So things that are like the, the in-scale big boys that we're going to have on the September cover, those were completely sold out. That new run of HO, that's Atherin, and the new HO Genesis P42s were really hot and sold out. I mean, it's it's amazing, the stuff. You know, so yeah, any it, it's it's not getting made and sitting around waiting for the next train show to be dumped at an amazing discount. But hey, since you since you mentioned that Atherin Big Boy, of course, I, I got the opportunity to, uh, uh, to 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 take a look and test run and do a little video review on the Atherin Big Boy, thanks to uh, the Model Railroad News and getting a, uh, my hands on that sample for a little while. Uh, but Tony and I were talking the other day the the Big Boy is going out for a, another excursion this year. And coming back to our area, I'm very excited about that. Yeah. Uh, in uh, around the first of September, I think is when it's supposed to get here. I I, I believe I don't have a lot of details on that yet, but uh, I've got a guy uh, that I know here who is uh, kind of new in model railroading. He's a G gauge guy. He actually used to work for the Missouri and North Arkansas for a while, and is pretty interested. Oh. I was talking to him today, and. Uh, uh, he's never gone on a on a, a a steam chasing trip before, so I think he and I and a couple other guys who aren't model railroads, but I think would just love it, are going to go uh, uh, chase that thing across Missouri and and uh, whenever whenever it comes to town. So really, we're really all, yeah, to we're already talking about it, planning to take a couple of days, you know, for that. I don't, I forget which if it's coming in like on the Marysville sub or across the KP. I you know we don't know all the schedule stuff yet, but. No, I'm looking forward to it because we and I, you were out, weren't you, for in the fall of 2019 when it came up from uh, Kansas? Yeah, I was. Kansas City, you I was then. at uh, Union State. The funny thing, it came in on Sunday uh, of the opening weekend of deer season, uh, so that was a little bit of a conflict. But I went went hunting with yeah. my family, and then I brought my son. We came to Kansas City, and I picked up my daughter. So my two <laughs> oldest kids and I. Uh, got to Union Station and got to see it come in and got some got some great photographs, some great video. It was uh, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> Lionel, you were going to make a so comment you on kinda, that. You yeah. kind of wheel in there with a with. I am I'm going to make a comment. Okay. And so did you kind of wheel in there with a a deer on the on the hooded strap to the hood of your car there or something? Uh, no, I I I did get a he deer. Was that but I dropped it at the locker on the way to Kansas City. So, <laughs> so well, hey, we've been running about. I, I, and I, I, you know what? Before this show started, and uh, Tony can back me up on this, and I begged you, I begged you, please, no more deer hunting stories. But <laughs> needless to say, you were handy. What, what is a that. model railroad video magazine without one good deer hunting story? <laughs> so. Well, hey, we've been we're, we've been going about about twenty five minutes, so we need to we need to wrap up. But uh, hey, guys, I I appreciate you uh, sharing with us and and joining us today. And we're glad that you all watched, and appreciate you joining us for uh, Railroad Wrap. Uh, be sure and check out the description down below my Amazon pick of the week. Some interesting things you'll love there. And also check out the two videos that are linked on the bottom of your screen right now. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Tim Lizzie?